The main attraction of the show Lock and Key is without a doubt the badass magical keys that live within the Key House, the ancestral home of the Lock family. This video is going to cover every key that is shown in the first season of Lock and Key and will detail what their abilities are using a combination of comic book knowledge and what is shown in the TV show. We won't outline what the keys are and where they come from in this specific video because that's kind of a big spoiler for future seasons of the show, but because people undoubtedly have those questions, if you want to know that info, check out our other Lock and Key videos on their origins. So each key in the Lock and Key universe has its own unique abilities, some incredibly powerful and dangerous, and some just for fun or utility. Also keep in mind that this season does feature a few keys that are made up for the purposes of the show storytelling and are not featured in the comics. So with that being said, let's discuss every key shown in season one. The Anywhere key allows the user to travel anywhere in the world as long as they've seen the door that they want to travel through. The Anywhere key is incredibly valuable because it allows the user to virtually go anywhere assuming, as we stated before, they know their destination. The key features concentric rings on the handle and when inserted into a doorway opens up a portal to anywhere the user wants to go. This key works on virtually any door in the world, and the key also appears to be able to negate the effects of another key within the show and comics called the Echo Key, which binds an echo to the well house on the key house property. The Mirror Key is interesting because it's not within the actual comics. It seems to be one of the few different keys that were made up for the show. Let me tell you, this key has bad news written all over it. This key essentially opens the door to the prison of the self. First off, when you're holding the key, you can see a mirror version of yourself with a creepy looking smile asking you to step into the mirror. That's already a no-go for me, but when the mirror key is inserted into the mirror, it opens a doorway to a mirror world. This world appears almost like a funhouse from the circus and becomes incredibly difficult to navigate. The end goal appears to be trapping the user within the world until they die, as evidenced by the multiple bodies found within. All in all, a 0 out of 10 would not recommend this key to a friend. The head key allows the user to enter their own quote unquote head and can view their own memories and the entirety of the stored content within their brain. It shockingly looks like a human head, however this key is probably one of the most complicated. Memories are difficult to control and you cannot interact with them. Additionally, your memories are shown to you in the way that you remember them, not necessarily the way that they happened. For this reason, what you can see within your own head cannot always be trusted. Additionally, the head key allows you to bring people and things into your own headspace. For example, if I wanted to put a book about about advanced calculus into my head, I would be able to recall all of it instantaneously. This is incredibly powerful, but as evidenced in the show and comics, having the knowledge doesn't always equate to understanding it. You can also remove items and feelings from your own head. You can remove memories to make yourself or others forget things, or entire feelings themselves. Kinsey was able to remove her own sense of fear, which essentially altered her personality drastically forever and made others believe that she was, you know, a badass when in reality, she wasn't. The ghost key is pretty cool as it allows the user to turn into a spectral version of themselves by walking through the door that the ghost key was inserted into. This also leaves the person's physical body right inside the doorway on the floor seemingly dead. Bodhi describes the body being like a sock with no foot in it. When in the spectral form, the person can go wherever they please, and they are completely undetectable by regular living beings. In order to return to their body, they must travel through the same doorway their spectral form left through. If another spirit travels through the doorway, that spirit will then inhabit that person's body. If the doorway is closed and the spirit cannot return through it, the person will be left in their spectral form indefinitely. 
The matchstick key is another key not shown within the comic books, but its abilities also appear to be far less fantastical than some of the other keys in the show and comics. And when inserted into any object, the matchstick key causes that object to burst into flame. You can hold it and put it in your pocket, but if you forcefully insert it into something, that thing catches on fire and seemingly will explode. The plant key is pretty ambiguous in the show, and it only shows up in like a single panel in the comic books, but it's pretty simple. It allows the user to control plants. Rendell and his friends use the plant key to control a tree and the roots of said tree to pull Duncan's memories below ground so they would be hidden forever. The music box key has a musical note on it, and when inserted into a magical corresponding music box, music starts playing that has the ability to command others to perform actions. The user must be listening to the music in order to hear the commands, and if the person's ears are plugged or they are outside of the hearing distance, the effects wear off and the person under the spell of the music box is then freed. The Identity Key. In the comics, this key is referred to as the Gender Key, but in the show, its abilities are fairly different. It's more of what I would call a Disguise Key. When inserted under the chin, the Identity Key transforms the user into another person altogether. This can be a different gender, age, height, and presumably race. There is a race key in the comics, but I anticipate the race key and the gender key were kind of just mashed into one key, making the Identity Key for the show. It makes more sense this way, at least to me, and this key is the reason that Lucas was able to avoid detection for so long. The mending key is part of the mending cabinet. When a broken item is placed inside of the mending cabinet, the door is closed and the key is turned. Whatever item is inside is instantly repaired. This is fairly straightforward. You put a broken cup in, you turn the key, and boom, fixed. This cabinet cannot hurt human beings or bring the dead back to life, and this is evidenced when Nina Locke attempts to put the cremated remains of her husband into the cabinet and nothing happens. The Echo Key is pretty morbid and possibly one of the scariest keys in the comics and the show, at least to me. The Echo Key has a well on the handle and has the ability to return someone who has died to the world of the living as an Echo. Essentially a living memory, the Echo Key brings someone back but binds that person to the well house on the Key House property. When entering the well house, the well asks the person holding the key who the name of the person they would like brought back as an Echo. In the show, you see Lucas die at the hands of his friends after they open the black door and Lucas is corrupted by a demon. When they split the keys among the remaining friends, eventually Lucas's childhood girlfriend, Ellie, ends up with the Echo Key. After living her whole life remembering her perfect childhood love, she goes back to the well house, inserts the key into the locked outside door, and wishes for Lucas to return. He returns, but he returns just as he left, corrupted. Lucas has become an echo, or essentially a living memory of his former self, but cannot leave the well house. If he passes through the doorway, he would be erased from existence, hence the reason he needed the Anywhere key to live. The Shadow Key is a key that is part of the Crown of Shadows. The key itself has a candle with a flame on it, and the crown, well, I mean, just look at this bad boy. Man, crowns are badass. I wish they were fashionable. Tell me you wouldn't wear this if you could get away with it. But anyway, the, the shadow key is inserted into the crown of shadows, and it bestows upon the wearer a number of abilities. First and foremost, the user is able to command a seemingly infinite number of shadow monsters. The monsters can take the form of whatever the person wearing the crown desires. The person wearing the crown can create a replica of themselves and enshroud themselves in shadows for protection. The shadows are extremely dangerous and powerful, but they are essentially just shadows, meaning they are pretty easily defeated. Turning on lights in the room or shining a flashlight in their direction just destroys them. And finally, we have the Omega Key. The Omega Key is undoubtedly the most sought after key in the universe, and for good reason. This was the first key crafted in this universe, and it has one function and one function only. 
the Omega key keeps the black door sealed. The black door will have its own video from us, but the long and short is that the black door is a doorway to another realm of existence. When opened, the black doorway allows parasitic demons to come through without a host. But without a host, these demons die immediately and turn into whispering iron. The Omega key keeps the doorway locked, and if any other key is inserted into the doorway and the door is open, the other side is essentially just more cave-like. You know, it's just, there's nothing there. So that is every key shown in the first season of Lock and Key. If you guys want us to go over every other key that is shown in the comic books, we'd be happy to do that. Just let us know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. Of course, it does really, really help us out. And follow us on all the social media that you see on screen. That's it for this video, guys. And remember the motto, it's Lock and Key over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.